All right, so the second type of probability that we're going to look at is experimental probability. Now, this is based on a, a data collected from actual experiments involving the event in question. Now, an experiment is a sequence of trials in which a physical occurrence is observed. For example, I could roll this dice 10 times, and in the 10 rolls, I would be wanting to know how many threes observe, are observed. And so that would be an experiment. Now, the outcome of an experiment, if I roll one die, one die the outcome of this is a six. And if we're going to take a look at the outcome of an experiment where we roll the dice 10 times, then we would make up a tally chart of all the results. So the number of ones, number of twos, etc. The sample space in this case is, um, now this is set notation, and the sample space is one through six, which is all the possible outcomes when we, we roll one dot. Um, so now if we're going to, let's say we roll the dice 10 times. So then we have 10 trials and we observe four times that the number three uh, comes up. So the pro experimental probability in this case is four over 10, which is two fifths, which is 40%. So now, if we take a look at a spinner, and you're going to have uh, access to an online spinner where you can actually perform an experiment like this. So let's say we spin, and first time we get a ret. And the question is, what is your prediction on the number of times it'll land on green? Well, you're probably going to say somewhere around the neighborhood of two because uh, there's a 25% chance of getting green. So therefore, you're going to say that in eight trials, we're going to get two greens. But since this is a random act, we don't really know every time we spin, we're not too sure exactly which is going to come up. And the, uh, each trial is independent of the previous trial. So that means that we could get anywhere from zero greens right up to eight greens. We can spin and get all green. So Here, we ended up with two greens out of eight events, eight trials. So if you had said two, then your prediction would have been correct because the experimental probability is one quarter or 25%, which is what we would expect. But if you look at the results here, you'll notice that this um, purple color ended up occurring four times. So the experimental probability of the purple was one half. Also, if you take a look at the orange, orange didn't show up once. So the experimental probability of orange was zero. Okay, so now if we take a look at a couple questions here, suppose you flipped a coin 30 times and tails showed up 19 times. The outcomes are either heads or tails, and the event is tails. So the probability of getting tails, or the experimental probability of getting tails, is going to be 19 over 30, because 19 times tails showed up out of 30 trials. If you roll two dice 20 times, and a total of seven showed up three times, that means that the experimental probability of seven occurring is 3 over 20 because we saw uh, 7 was observed 3 times out of 20 trials. So at the bottom of uh, so at the bottom of your page in the content you'll see the spinner simulation and you can actually change the spinner so that 
will have zero yellows. So now we have a, a spinner similar to what you saw before. So what we can do is we can spin and you can record these results. So if you and you can change the number of spins as well. So if we want to do them all at once and you can clear and do a number of trials.